visionary, create, she, digital. Hello. She says, she says, listen. When I was growing up, sport was normal for for girls. I grew up in a bike shop and I'm an only child. I think my father wanted a son, so he named me Colin. Um, and so, <laughs> but I, obviously, he didn't get a son, so I just got all the sport instead. Um, and so uh, I work as a brand strategist and I work with quite a lot of brands. I've worked with ASICS. Um, my, the sport brand that I work with at the moment primarily is Rafa. Um, and they're a fantastic cycling, a luxury cycling brand really. Um, and among, among others, I've worked with um, Sky Television. I've worked with um, quite, quite a number of different brands, but um, my heart is really in the world of women in sport at the moment. And so I wanted to bring this group of people together um, really because it was a debate that needed to happen, a conversation that needed to happen. And what's great is there is a huge difference and diversity in the in the speakers this evening. Um, so I just wanted to kind of kick off by talking about insight about women and getting to know how women think and behave when it, in relation to sport. And in particular, what I'm going to talk about is sport apparel. So the default is to think from the perspective of a man. Um, and in that sense, sport is always man, men, and women's sport is women's sport. Um, and you see this time and time again within the world of sporting apparel. And the reason for this is because we all think like men in the world of marketing. Primarily, we've largely been taught to compete with other men who work with us. We um, have taught, been taught to laugh at the same, same sort of sexual jokes and go for drinks with the boys and to kind of behave like one of the men. And if you want to make it in the world of sport marketing, we've sort of all been taught that you have to act like a man and you have to behave like a man and laugh at the jokes. Um, and so, of course, we don't ever actually think what about women and how do women think and how do women, even those of us who are women, um, so one of the things that I, I spent some time looking at is how, what are the ways that currently women's sport apparel is marketed, aimed at women. So the first I like to call entertainment for male readers, and it looks a bit like this. Um, and you see images like this as advertising in a lot of sport magazines, and it's just, it's kind of embarrassing, really, to think that this, this happens still. Um, and yet, we know why. It's because it is ent entertainment for men, um, to a certain extent. Um, so the second, second type is assuming women are the same as men and react to the same images that men react to. So, this is otherwise known as if the best athlete uses it, women will want to be like her. So this is taking professional athletes and assuming that women will want to buy the clothes that she's wearing. This is of crucial importance to professional women in sport um, because particularly in the UK it doesn't work. First of all, there isn't a lot of media recognition and so people don't recognize the woman to begin with. This is a huge issue. But second, it's because in the UK in particular, women don't want to look sporty. And that worries me to no end. I really think, and I've seen in, in the research that I've done, that the UK media has very much pitted athleticism against femininity. Um, and it's, you know, women are quite kind of expected to choose your you're supposed to be one thing or another. The media really likes simple women. So I, I saw this come up on, in my Twitter feed a while ago, and I just thought, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly why it fails. Uh, <laughs> so the big problem is that women try to meet these stereotypes. We try to kind of fit into one thing or another, and then, of course, we sort of fail to live up to it because we're obviously more complicated than just one thing. Um, 
And and then we beat ourselves up because because we don't fit the, the mold. The third type of marketing of sport apparel to women I like to call the empowered woman. And I think of these three this works the best, but it's still a long way from perfect. It looks a lot like this. Sometimes I call this the goddess. You see women alone on the beach, running, in the woods, and the problem with this is she's always alone. It's a very, very lonely image. And one thing that we know about women is that women are incredibly social, and this is something that bothers me to no end. So my approach with marketing sport apparel to women is to first start by treating women like a foreign market and giving it the, giving women the attention that you might give to opening a market in China or India and putting that kind of money behind it and attention behind it. So some of the things we've learned. Women really don't care that much about technical features of a product. You just have to tell her what it does for her. For women, the biggest competition is ourselves. It's convincing ourselves to go and do something. It's con convincing ourselves to go and, and do that little bit more to push ourselves or to compete with somebody who is your friend. Achievement is very rarely about being the best, and I say that knowing that there's a national champion in the room, so <laughs> I'd like to say that, that it's not always the case, but um, there's, there's certain things that we have to remember that achievement sometimes is a very complicated, very personal, very nuanced thing. And it remains that if we do it together, if we achieve something as a group, it's just that much better. Yes, women want to be attractive, but it's not quite as you'd expect. So I looked at fashion. Something really strange is happening in fashion. Um, there's a fantastic blog called The Man Repeller. If you haven't heard of it, you should look it up. Um, and she, she started this blog as a way of reframing fashion, not about attracting men, but about having fun, and about friendship, and about just enjoying what you're wearing. And what it did was it reframed fashion around not being about sexy, but being about sisterhood. And it all started with this campaign. Lanvin, um, I recommend looking at it at some point, but it's the 2011 Autumn Winter Lanvin campaign, um, which was absolutely fantastic. They're just dancing around like lunatics and totally uncoordinated. And it shifts our attention from, I wish I could be like her, to, I wish I was friends with them. I'm not sure if any of you have seen this. I threw a wish in the well, don't ask me, I'll never tell. I looked to you as it fell, and now you're in my way. I trade my soul for a wish, pennies and dimes for a kiss. I wasn't looking for this, but now you're in my way. So, what's exciting is that fashion is no longer taking itself so seriously. And because of social media, it kind of feels like you're friends with these people. But let's focus on sport once again. What's the real opportunity for sport brands to really understand what sport brings to her life? Sport is a reflection of how she sees herself and how she sees the world. Confidence and friendship go hand in hand. It's having permission to strive, a precedent to not shirk from success, and the freedom to look silly. Now I wanted to share with you a little bit of what I've been working on with Rafa. Um, and as a sport brand, 
they started from a default position <coughs> of being a, being a sport for men. And it's been absolutely phenomenal to see the transformation internally and externally for how the company has started to just fundamentally shift the way they think about women in sport. And crucial to this were all of these insights, among many others. But I just wanted to sh leave with one last um, video that has just come out, just to kind of encapsulate what I mean when I say that sport is about friendship and it's about looking strong and it's about confidence.